So uh, an interesting call, I think it was Wednesday, uh, might be Tuesday, Wednesday, I had a call from Richard Smith, the Deputy Mayor of Rockingham, and uh, it, it's great to be, uh, be a church where we have influence so that the, uh, the City Council call us for, for guidance, and that's what he was calling. Uh, now he's got this big issue, there was uh, a, a community residence uprising on Tuesday nights, it would be Tuesday, called it Tuesday night was, so... Uh, uh, and he had to go to this meeting and try and pour oil on troubled waters. And the, the, the issue is a church that wants to develop a property in Old Mantua Road, down near Barnyard, uh, the Barnyard, you know, the Barnyard, there's an inn down there and a restaurant and a, a, a function centre. Seven and a half acres they have there. It's the uh, Dutch Free Reform Church and they want to develop a, a 400 seat auditorium on that property. And the residents of Risen Island said, we don't want you there. And the deputy mayor was given the job by the city council to go and calm down the residents. And so he thought he'd better get some material and he, he came, to, came to me. Said, How am I going to calm down the residents? He's concerned that the reason the residents don't want them there is not because of issues like traffic, which we generate, and, uh, and volume of music, which we certainly generate, or lots of kids at playgroups and mops and stuff which we generate. Uh, that, he was concerned that none of those were the real issue, but the issue was bigotry toward a, uh, a church institution. And so we were able to talk through some of those issues and I told him all the kind of things that we may upset neighbours on, but actually all of our neighbours just moved out once we got there. <laughs> and uh, we were here first. And that's why we got planning approval for the next big building already. Although we, <laughs> the planning approval's there for that. It's just we're just going to wait out the right time for that because now everyone said yes. And if someone else comes in and says no, they are too late. <laughs> As a local church, we want the best for the community. And we want the best for other churches in the community. And so all power for that church for building their 400 seat auditorium there. I haven't heard back from Richard Smith, the Deputy Mayor, uh, but he said he'd only bring me back if it was bad news. So, it's called good news. So it should be in the paper soon that they've got the approval to build there. Praise God. Uh, more churches, the better. Now, in, in biblical history, uh, most of you will know that after the reign of King Solomon in, in Israel, the Kingdom of Israel got to its zenith under King Solomon, and after his reign, two or three generations later, it split. And there were two kingdoms. It was the kingdom of Israel uh, to the north, and their capital was Samaria, and the kingdom of Judah, uh, over, uh, uh, which, which uh, had its capital of Jerusalem. Uh, the kingdom of Israel became more recalcitrant and more off, uh, off center with God than the kingdom of Judah did, and it wasn't long before uh, judgment came upon the kingdom of Israel in 721 BC. King Shalmaneser of Assyria overran Israel and Samaria and took them all into captivity, took them, dispersed them to the four corners of the earth, a dispersion from which there is no record of them ever coming back. Exit Israel. Meanwhile, Judah in Jerusalem, uh, it was in the 6th century BC that the Babylonian Empire rose up and they dealt a blow to the Assyrian Empire and they came in and took captive everyone from Judah and Jerusalem uh, into captivity in Babylon, from which they did return uh, in this record a couple of generations later. And here's one of the records of their, their captivity, Psalm 137 verse 1, uh, which you thought was an old, old, old top 40 song. Uh, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. Uh, they, they were taken into captivity and they, they weren't happy about that. Uh, and a generation later, a generation later, these people of Jewish heritage are residents in Babylon. They're born there. And, 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 and the, the accounts that we get, presumably, they are longing for the land of their mothers and fathers. They want to go back to Jerusalem. And, and uh, it, they, they didn't want to be there, apparently. And it was into that situation that the prophet Jeremiah spoke. Whenever I think about this scripture, I, I think about this church, because I've done the stats here with you from time to time about where you all came from. And not many of you were actually born and bred in Baldivis, only the younger ones of you were. 
Most of you came from far-flung exotic places like Tasmania and like that, <laughs> or even further afield like Holland or, or, or the UK or South Africa or somewhere like that. Uh, most of you, and some of us even came from Queensland. <laughs> and here we are, and these people were far from where their parents' home. So Jeremiah spoke in that situation there in Babylon. Jeremiah 29 verse 7, Seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you. Wait a minute. God said he carried them there, but you and I know, I've just given you the history that the Babylonian army took them there. Here's the deal. Whatever reason you're here in Baldivus this morning, no matter what your heritage is, where your parents and your grandparents came from, or where you came from, you are here because God carried you here. You're here this morning, you have a date with destiny, it is a divine destiny, you're here for an appointment with God this morning. God has brought you here. No matter what your heritage is, God has brought you. Seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Now God understands that his people should want prosperity. He understands that that's a good thing for us. He understands that, that would be our heart, that would be a good heart that wants to prosper. And he says, so pray for the city to which I have carried you, because when it prospers, you too will prosper. Seek the peace and prosperity. So two things for us to do in the city, in the community in which we now find ourselves. Number one, seek the peace and prosperity of that city. And number two, pray for your city. And if you seek the peace and prosperity of the city, that means you will actually do something in order for your city to enjoy the peace and the prosperity. Uh, if you just seek it, uh, that's just a paper exercise, but you actually do something. Uh, so I believe we need to be intentional as individuals in cooperating in some way with the other institutions of the city and in supporting the individuals of the city. Are you with me? Here we go. Secondly, we are encouraged to pray for the well-being of our city. And this morning we, we prayed for our two schools, just two, because they're the two we invited. But really we prayed for all the schools that were represented, the teachers that were standing up here, which is quite a number. And uh, see, we are to pray for leaders in our community. We are to pray for leaders in our state. We are to pray for leaders in, in our nation. I've got a scripture coming up on, on the board there now. 1 Timothy, here we go. One Tim this one we should all say together. Here we go, all together. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. And just if you think, well, kings, Kings, why are we talking about kings? Well, the message gives rulers and governments. Rulers and governments. Uh, those in authority. It's the govern governmental, uh, governmental authorities. Uh, uh, these are those who serve in the four, according to John Bevere, or the five major societal uh, structures or institutions. Uh, let me just remind you of what uh, John Bevere uh, says. Uh, he, he talks about... Uh, he says, who are the governing authorities? In this specific text, Paul is referring to civil or governmental authorities. However, these words of exhortation apply not only to governmental leaders, uh, but to also other areas of delegated authority. The New Testament speaks of four divisions of delegated authority, civil, church, family, and social. And in speaking of social, I, am, I include employers, bosses, teachers, coaches, and so on. The New Testament gives specific guidelines for each area and in uh, most cases uh, the, the, the council spans the borders and extends to all areas of delegated